Hello everyone and welcome to the 132nd episode of the Poorly Planned Podcast. My name is Benedict. You may know me better as BHL Hudson. Here we're talking about movies, TV shows, fantastical beasticles, a bunch of nonsense. With me as always is my friend, co-host, Ooh. and Spaniard traveling friend? Frederick? <laughs> friend? That's the biggest question. I guess it's Spain traveling, you wouldn't be a Spaniard traveling friend that would imply you like walk over a bunch the, of Spaniards. The conquistador is what they call me. <laughs> you did send me a snap of you being at a uh, at a party with a bunch of conquistadors, I believe you, you wrote or something like that. I, I did say it's it's I believe I wrote time to party with the conquistadors. Yeah, which was um, you know, Honestly, <laughs> which is a disturbing thing. To <laughs> thing I'm very jealous of. It's been a, a while since I partied with conquistadors. Um, where <laughs> I, any- it's something that happens very rarely, and when it does, <laughs> it was uh, it's a good time. Yeah, we're back for um, last week. We had a bit of a pre-recorded thing. We're back. It's it's uh, you know I'm, I'm back in Denmark for a little bit for a little Easter break thing. Euro back in uh, back in Scotland, and we're here to just do mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. bit of mini review, a little bit of news, a little bit of that's it. Um, <laughs> it's that kind of episode <laughs> and don't do not ask for more please. <laughs> yeah uh i i do think the pre-recorded stuff we'll we'll discuss this post pod off air but this summer coming up there may be an increase in pre-recorded stuff so we can keep an episode each week but mm. we'll, we'll we'll see what happens to that but for now you we'll best believe we'll we're up to date with the newest stuff we're going to be talking morbius news we're going to be talking no fast and furious news we're going to be talking barbie news and of course, we're going to be talking about the Thor four trailer for Thor that came out the other day. Um, mm, for Thor. And <laughs> finally, we're going to be talking about fantastical beasticles, secrets of Dumble Stickles. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, <laughs> Dumble Stickles. but I, I, do. I have not seen it. But okay, I think it's still a good time to talk. We about will. It. I think we'll save it for like the sort of topic section after the news because it's a little more than a, than a minute okay. review. But. Um, up until that, let's just get into this. There are time codes down below. We're going to talk about mini-reviews okay. first. Um, do you have any, any mini-reviews we're going to talk about? What have you been watching I for do, the past I, I couple do. of weeks? Well, bef- before we go into that, do we want to just uh, uh, quickly talk about the fact that we are both traveling men just all over the place? You're in Denmark. I'm in Spain. Yeah. Just how how the week's been going? Um, yeah, I've, I've been, uh, been back in Denmark, back from the college life, which, you know, I am, uh, they do call me the uh, Zook which is the name of Chan- Tatum's friend in 22 Jump Street, the jock. Um, mm. But uh, um, I, I, um, I have seen many comments on your Instagram. They're like, oh my God, it's your boy Zook. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's going to be back in the, in, you know, in Denmark back home. Just so, just so chill, so mm-hmm. relaxing, so much fun. Oh, Had a little Easter egg kind of thing, Easter egg coloring, you know, the tradition. Um, amazing, amazing. And just prepping, prepping for the final bit of exams and stuff. And then, you know. Your yeah, boys, boys travel. Another bit of a traveling boy over the summer, like yourself. You'll be, a, you'll be a very Ooh. traveling boy. What can I say? I'm a well-traveled man. But yeah, your, your boy's been in. <laughs> so we've been saying your boy an awful lot this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an uncomfortable thing that I'm not happy about. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, went to Spain for for a little week to to see my sister who does like a year abroad there. Met up with my mom as well. Nice to see the fam once again, and then just uh, walked around. Uh, bit, did a bit of touristing. You were, a, you were on your surfing. Instagram showing off some uh, some of the sites you were yeah. seeing. You know me. I, I have to put a, put a bit on the on the gram and then um, and showing off yeah, them just, them just a... back muscles. Hubba hubba, <laughs> mama in trouble. Hubba hubba. <laughs> I should have commented that. That would have been so much better. Uh, missed Honestly, opportunity. No, I, I was gonna I was gonna say that is a like your comment. Made me laugh very much. <laughs> no, I was like, no. "Who is this?" And then I checked. And I was like, "Oh my god, of course!" <laughs> but yeah, that was that was uh, that made me. That gave me a good chuckle. Real knee slapper from BHL Hudson there. <laughs> That's and what I do best. <laughs> slap knees. <laughs> um, but oh yeah, just a, just a good old time. Went out as you said before, partying with the conquistadors, which was very strange because I went with. My sister, who's four years younger than me, and all her friends were four years younger than me. Can I just be clear? uh, Part the conquistadors, you just mean Spanish civilians, right? (laughs) Because I was like, when I was looking at, you know, it was was a good laugh. I was like, is there something special about these Spanish people that makes them conquistadors, or is it just their just location (laughs) in Spain? Is he literally partying with ancient conquistadors right now? No, I mean, I just went out. It was just like my sister was like, "Do you want to come out for for a night out in town?" I was like, "Okay, sure." 
she basically left me immediately and i was just stuck with like all her friends <laughs> That sounds like a who like a lot a lot of them didn't speak any English, so I was just sitting there like really trying my hardest to like <laughs> kind of make make an English Spanish blend, uh, which is yeah, yeah like, it was a strange time. Have you I heard got... of Jungle Cruise Conquistador Dwayne? <laughs> I thought you were asking me. I was like, <laughs> what is he on about? Right now? <laughs> I just complete <laughs> mental break, just break off from the conversation. <laughs> just start doing mini no reviews. Jungle Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> to start a mini review that you haven't even seen lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Yeah, I, I should have done that. Excuse me. <laughs> is Dwayne, aka the Conquistador, tu padre? <laughs> <laughs> God, this is this is probably. I mean, you have a Spanish girlfriend, so I guess it's not offensive. But I feel like somehow it still is. <laughs> well, yeah, no, brilliant. Um, but otherwise. Yeah, b- brilliant trip, and but now your boy's back in Scotland and doing a little uh, little school pod or university pod. Oh, another I'm stuck school into a classroom pod? once Hell more. Hell yeah, those are my favorite kind of pods. I can't wait for someone to interrupt them, and you have to like awkwardly try to explain what's been happening here. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm recording uh, a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Over the summer, I think we're gonna have a lot more traveling tales. I'm heading around America for a bit. You have you have your own trips that I'll let you talk about at some point. But it should be a fun time. We'll come back yes. with with stories aplenty. Um, for now, we're gonna jump into some mini reviews. First things first. I did in fact watch a classic film, um, the Ooh. film Dirty Dancing, starring Ooh. Patrick Swayze and others. Um, and, and others and others of, of notoriety. Yeah, <laughs> of uh, not as important as the Swayze. That Swayze sure does dance dirty. That's a quote from New Girl. Big New Girl reference because it also is in the first episode. You know how they sing that song? And can I just say, not that we're going to sing it. But we sing the shit out of this song. We, the song in Dirty Dancing, we, we've had a history of just... I can't explain why, but we hit certain notes with that song. There's a little flutter at one point there that it's just, it's just magical. It's just, it, it, it's like, it, it, it is magical. Whenever we, we harmonize and sing that thing together, it's just, the um, room gets butterflies. Very fun film. Um, yeah, sort of, sort of weird. I mean, you know, it has some of those like weird dated moments. That's kind a, of like. A, yeah, it is, it is a strange movie, but it's just a classic. Also the baby in a corner bit. I thought that would have more significance because it's like an iconic moment, but. In the film, it's just kind of at the end. He's like, nobody puts baby in a corner. And I'm like, hmm, that wasn't wasn't as much of a moment as I was expecting. <laughs> hmm, disappointing. <laughs> hmm, he did put baby in a corner though. She's in a corner right there, Patrick. <laughs> what are you talking about, oh, Patrick? Please, it physically <laughs> happened. You're delusional. <laughs> you know, it's it's fun '80s cheesy fun. Um, a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed. Hmm, very good, very good. Well, I'm I'm gonna have to trump you in in oldness. Or age in movie because yesterday in oldness. <laughs> God, in fact, uh, I did in fact watch "Don't Look Now," I believe it's called, a 1973 horror drama movie. Why? Yeah, that's a very good question, and the only reason is because my girlfriend is doing a a uh, module on film. I was going to say, this sounds very much like something I would be forced to watch for my film class. Yeah, exactly. So she's forced to watch that and analyze it. I was like, I'll watch it with you because, yeah, why not? Um, and I have to say, very strange and it's <laughs> kind of nutty. strange movie. <laughs> um, it is with President Snow, Do- Mr. Sutherland, I believe. Oh, yeah. Name? Sunderland? Do- Donald. <laughs> Donald Sumberland? <laughs> Donald Duck? Is that, is that the man? <laughs> Um, it's like a, it's such a weird, like, inception kind of thing where it's like, his daughter, uh, do you mind if I spoil? <laughs> You're gonna want to watch this amazing <laughs> This movie. is on my list very much, so I definitely had heard of it before now, but <laughs> go ahead, I'll allow it. <laughs> Fine, thank you. Um, basically his daughter drowns in the very first scene, um, and I hate to be the guy, but in, in this, like, very old, uh, fashioned way of filming... Like, in every single scene, even if it's, like, shot from kind of, like, a wide angle, there's, like, a mic that picks up his voice perfectly, right? (laughs) So, basically, like, he drags his drowning uh, daughter out of the water, and it's, like, a bunch of, like, splish splash, and, like, he's very far away, but then, like, as if he's, like, basically, like, doing, like, (laughs) like a mic boost, he's, like, (laughs) no. (laughs) I just chuckled. The movie, like, goes on, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, it's, like, uh... He sees, without him knowing this, but like he sees like future events happening, but in 
like in the now and he doesn't realize it's the future until like after it's happened and he looks back and like oh shit that was i saw that already it's like yeah like weird like psychic shit from 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 donald there mm. and then it's got possibly the most bizarre and weird ending in the world that it was just like so out of nowhere because like the entire movie has been kind of like shrouded in mystery and stuff like that like leading up to like his daughter died like kind of wearing a very like bright red uh coat and then, like, throughout the movie, there's, like, you'd see, like, in the background, like, a bright red coat run around. And they'd be like, oh, is, is that her ghost or something like that? You know, like, kind of, like, you know, playing on the, the paranormal. Mm. And then, at the end, he's, like, he sees the girl and, like, follows her. He's like, is that, is that my little girl? Is that Christine? And then, like, this big reveal where it's like, oh, my God, baby, I, like, I still love you. It's okay. I'm, I'm here for you, right? It, it's a reveal that this person, it's like... Turns around, and this really like creepy woman, like nah, dressed in a coat, and then she slits his throat and <laughs> runs away, and that's the end of the movie. It's so weird and bizarre. Huh. Um. <laughs> it's like until, until then it'd been like a very tasteful, like very like deep kind of movie, and then like at the end, it's just like <laughs> slits his throat and runs away, and Donald's just like, oh, and then for some reason, as his throat is slit, he like starts like. <laughs> he starts, it was such he a- starts absolutely pennywise it. <laughs> Jay, Jay, he was like <laughs> something that you would not do if your throat was slit. He was like, you see, like a f- like only a foot view of him just absolutely Harlem shaking it when he dies. <laughs> Goodness, I might have to watch this movie. This this sounds tremendous. Um, wow. <laughs> just look up Donald Sutherland death. <laughs> <laughs> he might be dead in real life, so I probably won't do that. But oh, is he actually dead in real life? I don't know. I hope not. Wow. Sorry, Donald. But um, I mean, what a performance! <laughs> There's also a Donald sex scene in this. Just to let you know. <laughs> Which makes his death hit all the more. <laughs> now you're emotionally invested in him. Huh. Um, <laughs> I've seen his booty, and now I see him die. What a journey. Uh, that's... Mm, one joke. <laughs> what, a, uh, what a horrifying... Huh. What a horrifying film. I've kind, I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot there for your girlfriend to analyze. There's also a very funny part in it where he's like... Um, he like uh, renovates like old churches and stuff like that. That's kind of like his job. And he's like on this board that's suspended by wood. And then suddenly, like the rope snaps and like he's like hanging. And then the mic thing happens again, where it's like really chaotic. You see see things like crashing around. He's like, hang on for dear life. And then it's just like the mic going, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just like Donald. What are you are doing? You sure this wasn't during the Donald sex scene? <laughs> Weird sexual moans from Donald as he's hanging <laughs> off like a rope. Huh, well, all right. Um, Weirdly, Donald was completely silent during his sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, all right. I, I have, um, yeah, I have a bunch of, like, older films that I've had to watch for film class as well, but they are, they're not as exciting as the Donald, clearly, for, um, for talking mm. about on the pod. Like, <laughs> nothing nearly close to that cool happens in <laughs> Battleship Potemkin from 1925. Um, but if it does, I will let you know. Well, goodness, all but right. But if there is a naked Donald scene, just please. <laughs> on, a more, on a more modern note, I hate to leave our very, uh, very like, cultured, older film theme, but on a more modern mm. note, after five years of being behind, I finally caught up on Better Call Saul, right in time Ooh. for the final season to start airing. I've been, like, basically since the show started, I've always been, like, a season behind. And finally, mm-hmm. I caught up, and now the, la- the last season is running for, like, I don't know, the next couple of months or so. So I'm caught up and ready to watch it as it airs. And my God, what a what a brilliant show. Definitely, like, genuinely one of the best shows I've ever seen. Like, ever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, like, it's different from Breaking Bad, and it's not quite as, like... I can see why it's not as mainstream as Breaking Bad, because it's not as, um, I guess, accessible. Like, it's a little bit... Yeah. Kind of slower more and niche. more methodical. Yeah, it, yeah, more niche. That's a good way of putting it. But I think it might be just as good. If I mean, maybe not, like as amazing but it's just it's so well written and clever it's definitely and, up there yeah the cinematography is spectacular and it's just the character writing and how the characters have progressed and it's just fascinating and it, it combines these like it's basically two different shows running at once where it's like Saul Goodman's like mm-hmm. lawyer stuff and then also all the cartel stuff with the Salamancas and and Gus Fring and Mike and all that stuff and the way they cross so like I used to think like ah they kind of they're a bit too separate but like the way they cross over and the way they do interact it's so well done and yeah I can't wait for the final season um I think the last couple of seasons have had the best Breaking Bad villain ever like in any of the Better Call Saul Breaking Bad stuff 
Um, it's I think it's Tuco's like cousin or uncle or something. He's called Lalo Salamanca. He's played by um, Mustachioed Man from Hawkeye, and Mustachioed he, Man from Hawkeye. Who's remember the oh. like the the guy who like is the sword him? the swordsman? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is Frank. Was that his name? Something dumb like that. He is like <laughs> <laughs> incredible. Like he's like he's so charismatic, but like. Mm-hmm scary at the same time and like the thing is he hasn't really done anything scary up until like uh, i mean he definitely has without spoiling anything but like he's been mostly that villain who like kind of of is all smiling and friendly and that kind of thing but he has this underlying like terrifyingness to him and yeah i no spoilers but this next season he seems like he's gonna go for some like he's gonna let out some of that terrifyingness and it's just oh my god so good so anyway uh amazing show I, can't wait for the new season i really want to watch it i really uh, like I've, I've always w- wanted to like start it i just never really gotten around to it but it might be it might be high next on the list for me i think it should be and it, it does it does start a little slow like it, it i guess it takes a little bit to get into especially coming off of breaking bad where like it's a lot more especially mm. early on like lawyer stuff but it's still really interesting mm. and the way it builds it's like crescendoing to this insane Climbing has so many emotional moments as well. Yeah, crazy. So, very, very good. Nice. Very good stuff. Very good. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll follow that up with a with a cheeky uh, TV show as well. Mm. I have, in fact, been watching a lot of Peaky Blinders. Okay. I just finished I talked, recently, I think. I think, I think the, the latest season has just been announced or is, like, coming out every day or something like that. Oh, um, oh yeah, it might just have finished and then they've... Uh, announced the movie that's coming. Like yeah, that. yeah, that's. I'm on the yeah. third third season now. I think. Yeah, like midway through the third season, and okay. the first two seasons, goddamn, so good, so 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 good. Yeah. Like, I I started watching it like a few years ago, and I just didn't really like get into it. But then now I like binged. I I think I've talked about it a little bit on the pod, but I've binged like two and a half seasons now, and it's just oh, top. Yeah. Like, uh, what's what's the main character's actor called? Killian, Killian Peakisman. <laughs> Killian Pekisman is so good. Like he's such a like smart and like stone cold uh, protagonist. That's just like oh, so good. The action's very good. Such a like gritty and cool show, and also very like cleverly uh, written because it's mm. like it's one of those shows where it's not like it delves into like the world of uh, horse fixing and like gambling and stuff like that. So it's not just like you know a straight up power show mm. or action. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's 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 very very good. I like it a lot. There we go. Look at us getting caught up on the current most popular pop culture things. Um, <laughs> Look at us not being oldies. <laughs> uh, and then, well, kind of a mix of the both. You know, we have the old culture, we have the new culture. We're just Ooh. all around cultured kings. Um, Col- <laughs> and then, <laughs> name one phrase that describes the point of that podcast. <laughs> cultured, cultured king. kings. Uh, and then finally, last thing, very quickly here for my in your views. Um, <clears throat> the UFC 273 event happened a couple weeks ago. Great stuff. I just want to say there was Ooh. one fight, Gilbert Burns versus Hamzat Shamayev. Just craziest fight I've seen in like a very long time. Definitely best fight of the year so far. Just, oh my, I, I was... Scr- what happened? What <laughs> I happened? I wasn't Tell screaming, but... It. Well, it was just, it was, so Hamzat Shamayev is this like up and coming, uh, like he's basically the most like... Oh, wait. Hyped. Wait, wait, wait. You got class or something? No, I'm not. I'm just sitting here uh, recording uh, a school project. Okay, so you need quiet. Yeah, I, I do, sadly. Okay. How long are you going to be? Um, 30 more minutes or something like that. Okay. Great, thanks. <laughs> well, there we go. Oh, God. It happened. Terribly, <laughs> terribly sorry. It's happened. I've been, <laughs> I've been revealed. <laughs> God. Um, anyway, it was a good fight. Well, let, let, let's, let's speed it up a bit then if, you, if we have a... <laughs> No, no, I mean, I'll I'll just, I'll just shoo him away if he comes back. But uh, that was terrifying. He came in, he's wearing sunglasses. He was like, do you need this classroom? I was like, yeah, I do. (laughs) And he just left. He's like, well, that makes two of us. Pulls out revolver. And he's like, do you need quiet? I was like, yeah, I I, I do. I do. Um, (laughs) No, actually, I need the classroom, but you can be as loud as you want. I'm just recording with this microphone. I'm sitting here recording a a video media podcast, but you can be as loud as you want to be in here. (laughs) Please bang some pots around my face. That'd be great, actually. Please just bang in here, bro. He just comes in with his girlfriend like, hey, do you need need quiet in this room or... (laughs) <laughs> or can I can I do some uh, Sutherland-esque uh, moans? <laughs> can I absolutely Donald uh, it over here? 
Um, <laughs> Do you need a bit of Donald atmosphere in here? <laughs> um, anyway, the fight was uh, was great. It was a, it was a crazy crazy thing. Anyway, I've got I've got one more little mini review thing here. All right. I also yesterday watched Sing Street. I don't know if you've heard of it. I have. It's supposed to be very good. It is very very good. It is. It's such a like a delightful movie to watch. Also because it's like it's set in Ireland, so you can obviously relate. Oof. Um, but also, like, the music's just so, so good, and, like, the story is cute, and I don't know, it's it, it gives me um, a weird vibe of, like, a lot of Danish, like, teenage movies that I've, like, I've seen, like, have you ever seen, uh, um... No, I don't think so. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not familiar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's such a good one. The music's great, and the, the acting's also quite good, honestly, and, like, it delves into some, like, familial issues and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very, very good. Uh, not much to say, but just enjoyed a lot. Yeah, I remember like five, six years ago when that came out, it was like very, very hyped. Like everyone was saying, you have to see it. And I, I did, can't remember why I didn't. But yeah, I've, I've heard it's very good. So. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I broke off from the group and I, and I didn't see it. So <laughs> but I'm well. a bit of a rebel in that way. Good to, maybe, maybe I'll put it back on the list if I'm feeling generous. Um, <laughs> if I'm feeling generous. Also, is it time for, for the news now? Because if it is, I'm going to crack open a little... Crack open a what? Crack open a monster. There we oh. go. Oh, God. You drink monster energy drink? Mm. Ah, that's so... Oh, yeah. So disappointing. <laughs> I won't lie. It's not even a cool monster. It is a zero sugar one. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of monsters, do you want to hear some Jared Leto Ooh. news? I would love to. Okay, I'm just going to read this word for word. I think this is from... Uh... Actually, let me just make sure what where this was from yeah from discussing film on twitter i'm just gonna read this headline okay 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 <laughs> jared leto was so committed to playing morbius that he would use crutches and slowly limp to the bathroom however the pee breaks began taking began taking so long that it was slowing down filming so a compromise was made for him to use a wheelchair now <laughs> can we <laughs> Okay. What in the world uh, is going on? I also think the past couple of weeks, Mess Magnuson came out with a quote about how method acting is stupid. Oh, yeah, I was just about to say, it's how, like, uh, method acting is pretentious. And, I I mean, is there a better example than Jared fucking Leto? <laughs> Ooh, look, okay, I, um, I was going to say I respect it in some way. I don't know if I do in any way. I mean, look. I, I don't respect this particular it's, one in any well, way it's the craft of acting and like i, I was talking um who's I? I was talking to someone about this and i was like yeah you know mass beings and said method acting is stupid and they were like oh like is not what like daniel day lewis will do and i was like yeah that's probably not what he meant like someone who like you know you're praying praying you're playing yeah, yeah. like abraham lincoln and like you really immerse yourself in it to be like this important mm -hmm. character in history and like it's really like it the craft and all that like all that well i mean i would also <laughs> argue that morbius is a terribly important political a kind of figure piv pivotal point in the modern era but then jared leto has done and i mean i guess yeah again i think it's a combination of like the role he does it for and the level he takes it to where like if he was doing this yeah. for i don't know i haven't seen dallas buyers club but that seems you know like a more serious important film and if he was like getting in the head mm. of that character that's something else but for the joker in suicide squad and morbius, and morbius in morbius <laughs> <laughs> i mean morbius is, first of all he should have learned his lesson with the suicide squad second of all morbius is like <laughs> Not even an interesting character, like like at least the Joker, like other people have method acted it before, like with Jared or um Heath Ledger, he like stayed in character for a while mm -hmm. or whatever. But like with Morbius, yeah. it's like it's like a trash like he must he should he how could he not have known <laughs> you should, that you should say that to him. <laughs> it was a trash. Uh, Jared, this is awful. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but and then also just the inconvenience. It's just so stupid. He's like he's trying to get in that I don't know, but isn't method acting about like mindset and then he's like he's inconveniencing the cr i mean literally he was they needed to take him in a wheelchair to the bathroom because he wanted to stay in that's just a that's just a dick move isn't it <laughs> jared you're just being an ass right now <laughs> just like <laughs> also like how bad of an actor do you have to be i not even bad just like fucking strange of an actor do you have to be that in order to stay in character you get to walk to on crutches to the to take a piss yeah, I mean, yeah, look, we're... we're and how often do, 
<laughs> How often does he pitch? <laughs> Every 20 minutes. He's like, he literally Every comes back in like minutes. five minutes. Like, like, like the right. amount of time he must have spent in like to delay production. Like, it, just it, think it, about that. Yeah. That's insane. It's enough to make a headline about. Like, that's, yeah. So look, we're not, you know, we're not actors. We're not, uh, we don't know the craft or whatever. But based on everything, but Mess but, Mickelson knows But the neither craft. does he. And, <laughs> and he said method acting is pretentious. And I'm inclined to agree with him. And ba- especially after like his Suicide Squad stuff. Yeah, big L for um for Jared on this one. Anyway, moving on. Did you hear Brie Larson is going to be joining Fast and Furious 10? Ah, oh, that is. I did read that on the CNN front page. <laughs> <laughs> they were yelling that around campus. This just in. <laughs> Fast and Furious 10 is putting together quite the cast, though. It is having um Ratcatcher 2, Daniela Melchor. It is having Jason Momoa, and now Brie Larson, mm-hmm. and of course Ludacris. Um. <laughs> so, of course ludicrous Exciting did i tell you about my epic ludicrous moment um i don't know if i want to hear it but go <laughs> ahead he sounds so genuinely uninterested <laughs> <laughs> it's like reading the paper um did you i don't know if i told you on, on the pod but basically we went to the pub quiz it was like a music round i feel like um, all of your stories start with we went to the pub quiz <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's half my life honestly <laughs> that and podcasting <laughs> at the pub quiz i tell about my podcasting stories and vice versa <laughs> anyways and then a rap song came on i was like man i've got no clue what this is i like jay like no clue who it is i was like just to be funny let me just write down ludicrous <laughs> and then it was ludicrous and i just left it was so good <laughs> anyway, and I just dropped, dropped that was my mic. epic that was my epic uh ludicrous moment honestly yeah, i don't want to say <laughs> kind of generous generous use of the word epic but um anyway yeah <laughs> fast and furious 10 exciting stuff um the barbie movie has been getting more casted and um i mean i know we're not really interested in the barbie movie although i mean speak I for yourself yeah, sir. i'd say maybe you're very interested but i mean it is interesting how much they're so it's being um is it like a live action Barbie? Or yes. What's happening? And it's so it's being directed by Greta Gerwig, like acclaimed director of Lady Bird and Little Women. Little Women we established. Not a good movie. But uh, <laughs> it will, according to IMDb. Before I give her too much credit, just remember <laughs> that movie's trash. Uh, it'll be about a doll living in Barbie land is expelled for not being perfect enough and sets off an ad- on an adventure in the real world. A live action feature film based on the popular line. So. Let me just read you this cast real quick, because I'm surprised by how, how stacked it is. So we start with Kate McKinnon. We then go to Michael Sarah, Then we okay. hit a little bit of Simu Liu, Shang-Chi. Then mm. just throw a dash of the feral. Then no. Emma M- Mackey, McKay from Sex Education, the one who mm-hmm. looks like Margot Robbie. Then yeah. Ryan the Goose Gosling as Ken. And then... That is a very accurate uh, casting. Margot Robbie as Barbie. So, no. Bit of a mad cast, you know. I'm just putting it out there. Also, that is a mad Emma cast. Mackey and Margot Robbie in the same movie. Bit of a mad mm, one. Inception. I won't be able to tell them apart in their scenes. Maybe that'll be a joke in there. Who knows? So, anyway, I just thought that should be pointed out. Barbie movie, not the worst of shouts cast-wise. Um, that does not sound bad. And final piece of news. Do you think that means we'll get a steamy Goose and Robbie sex scene? In the Barbie film, probably not, because also Ken (laughs) doesn't have genitals. Um, But (laughs) neither does Barbie, just to be clear. But um, (laughs) it'd be unfair if Barbie had a Ken (laughs) did. But I'm curious to see what direction is, because Greta Gerwig, like, serious Oscar director, but then, I mean, it feels like it should be comedic. I don't know if it's a kid's film. I don't know. So I don't think so. I think it's probably going to be, like, more of a kid's film. Um, But with the goose involved, you never know what could happen. And final piece of news, did you see the trailer for Thor Love and Thunder? Hashtag for Thor. (laughs) Hashtag for Thor. I did, in fact, for Thee this. And it was... uh, (laughs) And did you... It's... For think it looked good. I for thought it was not for, th- for terrible. <laughs> yeah, let's just see how long we can keep this going. Uh, let's, just keep, let's, <laughs> let's keep saying it until it becomes a recurring joke. We just got we got to force him now. We haven't had a good one since what a joke. <laughs> we just gotta keep pushing <laughs> until something sticks. Oh my god, what a f- f- fabulous moment! <laughs> <laughs> I love this f- th- trailer. <laughs> anyway, I love the podcasting. <laughs> Anyways, I did see it and I liked it. But I'm also weirded out by it in a in a weird sense because I've got no clue what direction this movie's gonna take. Yeah, I th- I think 
Because I, I felt the same way. I was like, this looks good and fun, but it also, like, it doesn't look like a movie. Like a movie. Like, it looks like a comedy skit, maybe? Um, yeah. Like, it doesn't really have any, like, yeah, conflict or, like... Yeah, the thing... I don't know. It could just be a Grown Ups 2 moment. <laughs> that, honestly, that'd be kind of fun. Like, yeah, I think it's kind of, like, a, a trailer usually shows, you know, some kind of conflict. And, like, in this one, it ended, and I was like, so what's the... What are they... What's the problem here? It looks fun, and I like the, the choice of song, Sweet Child of Mine, but... Yeah, it doesn't really... I don't know. It's a teaser, so it's not supposed to, like, show, like, a big thing. But I thought it would show... <laughs> Boy, did it tease me good, but... <laughs> I thought it would show, yeah, a little more, like... confused. And it, it also... Because I think it, it's... I think it's showing, like, maybe the first little bit of the movie, like, maybe the first half hour or so with, like, some of the comedic bits. And I think it's also because the film is taking such a different direction. Like, everyone has these, like, cartoonishly goofy costumes. And, like, like I think it's Zeus in there at one point. He has, like, this Thunderbolt, and he's wearing, like, a cartoon suit... You know, it, yeah, mm-hmm. it looks even more than Ragnarok. It looks like a kind of parody, non like actual yeah. Marvel thing. And I don't know if it, mm-hmm. I don't know if it looks cheap or if it looks just like a fun kind of vibe. I'm still, you know, it's a teaser, but um, yeah. it's a teaser. I can't really tell much from it, but it it certainly did not give me like an epic Marvel movie feel. But it gave me like I still want to watch it. Like it made no, me yeah, it looks fun. And it looks, I mean, yeah, it looks like what I was kind of hoping it would be, you know, goofy and more of that Ragnarok kind of style. We have female Thor in Jane Foster, uh, Natalie uh-huh. Portman's back. I couldn't really tell it was Natalie Portman if I hadn't known. Yeah, me neither. But I, I, said, I said to my girlfriend, that's Natalie Portman. She's like, no, it's not. I was like, it is, it is. She's like, no, it's not. <laughs> you're like, but I, babe, I do, a, I do a podcast. I swear. <laughs> babe, do you know who you're talking to? I'm one <laughs> half of the Poil Plan podcast. <laughs> I mean, that looks cool. You know, I'm curious to see what direction that goes in. We haven't seen Natalie Portman since, I believe, uh, Thor 2. She was in an Endgame, but that was like deleted footage. Um, yeah, the Guardians yeah. are in it. Some Pratathan. Um, it looks like it looks like Pratathan will leave quite early on, though, don't you think? Yeah, I think, I think again, that's why I think it's like the first maybe 30 minutes of the movie they're, they've got footage from here. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. also, wild thing, this was the latest or closest to a release Marvel trailer has ever done. So it's coming out in July, and they just put out the first teaser uh, end of Ooh. April. So this is, this, yeah, this is the closest they've ever released a trailer for. So I don't really know why they did that. If, I don't think it's indicative of any, like, production troubles. It's probably just because they have, you know, so much other stuff coming out. Like, they have Doctor Strange coming up in a couple weeks. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it looked... Yeah. It, what, is it exactly two weeks or, like, 15 days from, from now that it comes out? Uh, it's May 5th, May 6th. I don't know. I'm not a fucking mathematician, right. but, um... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no Einstein, but I know it's soon. <laughs> Looks like a, a fun old time, I have to say. Yeah, nothing it, didn't get me crazy hyped, but it's a teaser. Um, and I think it, it, looks it is like, a teaser. Look like a good old time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, again, if it's the, if it's the Thor and the Waititi, I will obviously mm. watch it, but it, uh, I, I do want to see a bit more before, before going into it. If Waititi is not busy sexing up all the members of his crew consensually but um, true anyway and now moving on to the topic for today's pod kind of i mean we'll talk about Oof. it for a little bit i did in fact yeah. see fantastical three stickles um Ooh. fantastic beast three the secret of dumbledore um and what a <laughs> now okay i'm uh, before you say anything i need to know <laughs> how was the hand job scene <laughs> It unfortunately did not exist. Um, there are no. I will say okay. Spoilers for Fantastic Beasts three. Um, there are. T- um, don't spoil too much because I'll be going to watch it soon as well. Okay. Okay. Well. Mm. Okay. There are minimal scenes with Dumble and Grendel. Um, just have to put it out there. Is there, there. any love making whatsoever? No. Um, Is there any sexual tension? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But that might just be something I picked up on and it wasn't intentional. <laughs> it might just have been you and the guy you were sitting next to in the movies. <laughs> it may have been the fanfic I was writing in my head as Mess Magnuson and Jude Law stared at each other, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, it was very bad. I, I don't know. It wasn't very... It was better than the last one. So there's that. Okay. It, honestly, for the first hour and a half, it was really all over the place and like weirdly paced and again i think it's maybe because jk rowling is writing these movies and she is like a book author and there's a difference between writing a book and a screenplay so like i think the yeah. pacing of the films is weird for that reason possibly but it was much more enjoyable and entertaining and felt like it had some substance to it more so than the last one where the last one just felt like mm-hmm. such a there was no substance to like anything and it was just like people yelling whatever at each other where is this one 
the first hour and a half, there was some intrigue, there were some fun moments, Newt was doing his thing, Dumble was doing his thing, you know, it, they had this ragtag <laughs> team, it wasn't great, but it was like, it was something, you know? It wasn't good, but I was, I was enjoying it. And, and then, then it keeps going for like 45 more minutes after that, and it just... <laughs> it feels endless and like you're being stabbed slowly and painfully and can't move. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but oh. it goes on for. <laughs> okay, I could move, but I was still being stabbed slowly. <laughs> it just it goes on for so long, and it's just it gets so boring and so convoluted and so tied up in its own world, <laughs> and it just it's like it's these Fantastic Beast movies. They feel like they were built. To never end. Different. <laughs> <laughs> like they were, they were, they, you can tell these are not based on something that someone genuinely had a good idea to write about. Like the Harry Potter films mm. and books, that's a story that someone had and it's like, it builds Full to something, but and, each individual yeah. chapter has its own merit and own themes and own lessons and own story. This one feels like they were like, we need to pump out movies to make money, write some bullshit. And she was like, all right, I can do that. It's uninteresting characters you don't care about doing nonsense for two and a half hours so how how was how was mass Mikkelsen? how was he mass Mikkelsen was pretty good um he yeah i think he's better than johnny personally and this is not a getting involved in any of the you see all the johnny stuff going on lately we're not getting involved in any of that i'm just saying performance wise i think mess was better he just i mean he feels like a different character but he I, he doesn't get a lot to do but like he's you know he's good at being that kind of villainous role and he does have a bit of like a presence to him, you know, more so than I feel mm -hmm. like Johnny did. Johnny just felt kind of like a silly guy in a costume, whereas Mess at least like <laughs> feels like a, a serious guy in a costume. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And, but yeah, the thing is, these films, they just, if these films had been about Dumbledore and Grindelwald doing their battling or whatever, and then, you know, maybe have Newt and his creature stuff in there. Okay, you could take everything that's happened in these three movies and cut that down to one movie with just that as the main thing. But because they have all this stuff that you don't care about with these other characters, the stuff with Queenie, the stuff with uh, Queenie, the most maybe, annoying character ever. All these side characters, his brother who does nothing, all these side characters that have no character, no discernible, interesting traits. They're just, they introduce a new person in this. They're just there to like fill time. It's like, yeah, I don't care about like, any of again, their, I their plot lines. Yeah, I haven't I, again. I haven't seen all the Harry Potter movies as we established last episode, but like it seems that every like there's a lot, even more so in than in the fast fantastical testicle movies that there's a lot of like side characters, but each one is like an actual interesting one that you want to learn more about and care about. Yeah, way, or maybe not care about, but like at least fills space and time. And they also like in give a them way. their own like they have their appropriate role. Like they're like a supporting character. Like in this, the supporting characters take up so much time of doing these like side things that you don't care about. And they try to have like these emotional. Oh my god, Ezra Miller! I totally forgot about him. He has this whole plot line in this movie, and it's so so boring and so uninteresting. And they have like. <laughs> He's never been interesting in these movies. Like, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> and, and yeah, they, Ezra. And then, the ending is also the dumbest thing. And they introduce this entire, the entire point of the film, the entire conflict revolves around this political thing that has never been mentioned. Okay. I'm 99% sure. Cause I'm, I'm a pretty big fan and I'm 99% sure this has never been mentioned in any of the books, movies, anything, this whole political uh, okay this isn't a spoiler but just like the premise of the film no, no, basically. You, i mean you, again you can you can you can uh you can spoil slightly just like not like the exact main yeah okay well just the, the premise on. is that there's they're having an election the magical world is having an election to elect basically the leader of the world like the president of everything and it's like this this is not a th and then grindelwald is like trying to win that and that's like the problem they're trying to stop grindelwald whatever and it's like this is yeah. this has never been a thing. Like, since when is there a president of everything in the world? And like, uh, with, yeah, without spoiling it, they delve more into that at the end. Like, throughout it, you're kind of like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but then they like the whole <laughs> this, finale. This is... gives me. Uh, <laughs> this gives me heavy. You got one wife. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the ending of it is all built around this, and it's just like, it's just this nonsense, and it's about this fucking deer, and I won't spoil what happens with the deer, but it's the dumbest. Like. You have to do something exceptionally dumb for people to watch a Harry Potter movie, which is inherently silly and about silly creatures and silly spells and stuff. And for me to go, that is so stupid. Like, 
<laughs> it had, it was a silly goose moment. We'll, we'll talk about it when you've seen it, but there's something about a deer creature that is pivotal okay. to everything that happens. And it's like, what the fuck is this? Like this complete nonsense. And it's just, yeah, it's whatever. But besides that, yeah, I just found, yeah, the first hour and a half, I was like, all right, you know what? This isn't great. But like, if it had ended there, I would have been like, you know what? That was an improvement. But it, it did not end there, and it went on, and the rest of it was very bad and very boring and uninteresting and terribly paced. And yeah, it has like it has fun moments in it, and it has good performances. Jude Law is pretty good. Newt Scamander Man is pretty solid. Kowalski has a couple of fun moments until he's like overused. <laughs> but that's that's all Kowalski is though. It's a few fun moments, and then he's just like <laughs> he's there too long. Just again, something that really annoyed me. And this isn't. It's kind of a spoiler. It's not really a spoiler specifically. It's just, and oh, you, fine, you fine, can fine. kind of guess this would happen, but the ending again, just like the last movie and just like the one before that, it's such a complete anticlimax. And then it's like the next one, that's when the exciting stuff will happen. That's when all the, the chaos and the, and the fighting and all that stuff, like this like weird wet fart of an ending happens. And then it's like, and that's like the climax of this movie. And it's like, and then the next one, that's when it'll be interesting. And, like, they've done that for three movies now. We've watched three movies with no, like, satisfying conclusion to any of them. And that's what I mean when I say these movies feel like they were built to just never end and never give a satisfying ending. It's like, and, and yeah. we'll see you next time when then that'll be the fun one. And it's like, no, just make... These three movies could have been cut down to one movie that probably still wouldn't have been very interesting. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <sighs> Sorry, go ahead. Go God, on. what an angry VHL <laughs> Hudson rant. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking um, of maybe making a video. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Got a lot of rage out just now. But I've, I've got a question. Isn't... So this is a prequel to all the Harry Potter movies, right? And yeah. Grindelwald is mentioned in Harry Potter and is like a figure of the lore, right? Yeah, yeah. So how are they just making up random stuff he's he's doing now? Like this whole president's thing that's never been happened, like never been mentioned before. Like surely he was famous for one thing and that's why he was like like notorious in the harry potter movies and that should just be what he does in this movie yeah i mean they've done like basically what they've done is what they said about grindelwald was vague enough that they can fill in all this other bullshit like they're like in the in the harry potter movies it's basically like dumbledore defeated this like basically like wizard hitler grindelwald they had like a romance and they had a falling out and they had a big battle to save the world and dumbledore won and that's the end and so like that's the thing. They're like, it feels like they're like, okay, we can squeeze in enough room here. They still, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it, but like, there's not a satisfying anything, like any kind of conflict or resolution that happens in this film. It's like you end it like the same place you started, you know? And it's like, yeah, so they yeah. basically just have enough time where it's like, okay, we can run in some circles around this where it's like, okay, we just know that they were in love and then they had, you know, a big battle. And like, there's a bunch of space in between there where we can do a bunch of random nonsense that is nonsensical and uninteresting and so that's what we're gonna do so i think yeah like technically it makes sense in like the timeline of the thing but in the individual story it is very stupid and i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's very um, stupid and i do not enjoy anyway um yeah do you think do you think it would have worked better as a tv show no i i think it would have worked better <laughs> if anyone wanted to make these like like, okay, no, there's, clear, there's clearly some passionate, like, the animation, like, the, the, the special effects and, like, the design of the creatures and that kind of thing. But in terms of, like, like yeah, I think on a low level, like, a lot of the individuals working on this have passion for it and, like, want to, you know, make the best creature design and want to make the coolest set piece or whatever. But it's, like, the mm -hmm. problem is the top level when they first decided to make these with, like, just the intention of, like, we got to keep this franchise going. And so it's, like, it, again... It, there's so much stuff in these movies that shouldn't, like, doesn't have to be there. These plot lines with these side characters, like Queenie, like Yusuf, like Ezra Miller, where it's like, it, it's not interesting, and you, you, they don't do enough to make it interesting, but they still have enough of it there for it to be boring and like to take up time. So it's like, mm. it's just a yeah, it's a it's like a ragtag team, except you don't care about eighty percent of it, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I think they should. I think if they want to do this, they could have made one maybe two movies it's kind of like the hobbit movies the hobbit movies could have been one maybe two movies instead of like this mm -hmm. giant trilogy where they chop up a story and try to just expand it with a bunch of you know shit and it's like yeah this could have been yeah i think one movie about like the wizarding war sure make it three hours long and all that stuff and whatever and had have newt commanders a yeah, fun like, side character but don't drag it out to all this yeah 
Yeah. Anyway, so what are you seeing? <laughs> how many? There's how? <laughs> there's how many? Uh, Movies left of these? Two more coming I out? think they were going to make five initially. I don't know if this one's doing well at the box office, but like, uh, it's so, and it's so, it was so disheartening to like, to watch also thinking about like how far removed it is from Harry, like Harry Potter, like this story of like this universal story that you could show anyone in the world and they're like, oh, that's interesting. Like that's a interesting story. A little boy, you know, finds that there's a magic world over it. This one, it's like, it's so specific and so convoluted and so boring. There was, mm. <laughs> there was a little kid in our cinema who he was walking out and with his mom and his mom was like so did you understand any of that he was like no <laughs> and i was like damn <laughs> no clue what happened <laughs> there's a very enjoyable newt scene where he has to escape a prison with a bunch of scorpions best scene in the movie by far oh. newt does a little okay. dance to get around the scorpions and it's very nutty and very is delightful. it is it a uh <laughs> is it a milo-esque dance is my question <laughs> <laughs> not, not really but in the first fantastic beast movie there's a scene where he has to like get this giant buffalo thing into his suitcase and he has to do like a mating dance to make it calm down and it had very similar vibes All to right, that and yeah. it was very enjoyable okay. um but that is that is about the only scene in the movie that i really liked if i'm honest <laughs> mm. <laughs> the only thing i want to see is newt dance and there was is no, that too much to ask there was no cumbledore so like what's the point even we need to like at the end of at the poorly planned uh poskers or pemmies we're gonna need to have a most disappointing <laughs> movie fiction that didn't happen because <laughs> a cumbledore a scene is is absolutely that yeah it's it's required um well yeah so anyway i hope you enjoy it now when you see it i guess we'll have more to talk about when you see it but um yeah not yeah, a fan. I'll, I'll, i think I'll, i think i'm watching it later this week so uh the next <laughs> pod we'll we'll be able to properly discuss it <laughs> um well now it is time for the dom news Uh, the Tom Canoes today comes to us from Kean, who sent us a thing from Movie Facts on Instagram. It says, Lock, Stock, and Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise saved the American release of Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels by endorsing it at a buyer screening, launching the careers of Jason Statham, Guy Ritchie, and Matthew Vaughn in the process. So, in a sense, Damn. we have Cruise to thank for um, Hobbs and Shaw, mm-hmm. Fletcher Mundo, and The Governor. So, thank you, Cruz. Damn. Fun little butterfly effect from Cruz. Yeah. Well, now it is time for the announcements and such. Take it away, us, right now. First of all, on the fan page, there was a very delightful video that I'll put in here. Very enjoyable. It's the clip from the Suicide Squad, but he's dubbed over me saying, Peacemaker, what a joke. Excellent stuff. Peacemaker. What a joke. <laughs> Some comments on the, latest, uh, on the latest two pods, actually. Also, can I just say, not to jinx us and or boost our own egos here but the pods lately have been doing kind of popping off kind of nice you know i mean 500 to 900 views on some of these i'm just saying and that's only on youtube so i'm just saying the pod might be going places keep up whatever you're doing people keep doing it like subscribe comment doing tell your friends about it we're we're, we're on a good it's trajectory so good. here we're getting we're getting places mm-hmm. i'm just saying um, oh can i also just say uh <laughs> very I mean, this is just shows how I make friends in, in foreign places. But whenever I couldn't communicate with my sister's friends when on the night out with the conquistadors, I did just resort to being like, uh, you, you have a podcast. And then I just showed them the podcast. It got like five subscribers. Oh, hell yeah. Look at that. That explains our, our massive growth in the past couple of days. Um, well, we have some, some comments. First of all, Limelight says, instead of Moon Knight, I've started calling the show Moon Knight at the Museum. And I'm sad this hasn't caught on. That is excellent, and I really enjoy that. And, um, oh yeah, there is Moon Knight, actually. We forgot to talk about it. I will talk about that next time. Anurag was happy to see an hour-long pod. Thank you, Anurag. Daniel says, another really great, enjoyable episode. Keep up the great work. P.S. Morbius, what a film. Thank you, Daniel. And yeah, Daniel always with the positivity and or extreme negativity at the end. Um, <laughs> I think the last three times, or like three parts, you've always read... Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> he made some <laughs> outrageous comments. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just leaves the nicest of comments. Um, G. Curtis says, Thank you, Daniel. I am someone who watched the Oscars live, UK time, so the slap happened around 2.30 a.m. In the context of the show, it was the most strange and awkward thing. There were so many awkward skits throughout that it seemed like another skit, but the atmosphere of the night completely changed. Ruined my night, going to therapy to recover from Big Willie's shenanigans. Um, yeah, no, I think Big <laughs> Willie's have to pay for your therapy for that. Damn. Um, ZJ13Goat says, some might say Chris Rock got rocked. Um, 
<laughs> Some might. It's <laughs> a good point. The movie guy says the five year anniversary is coming up in less than a month. Time flies. That's actually crazy. I should uh, note that down. We should do a little something for that. I don't know what, but we should do a little something. Do a little something. Five years. That's nuts. Um, that is nuts. Then Josie says this was one hundred percent worth the wait. One of my favorite episodes. Um, Which episode is this on? Is, is the, the Morbius, the Morbius this, uh, and Will Smith one? Mm. And then Dark Demon Queen says this is my first time ever. These guys are hilarious. A new subscriber. Let's a go. new subscriber Finally. in the comments. I don't what? know. I don't know if we've gotten a comment in like forever that says like I'm new to the show and I really enjoy it. So that's it's we're just in our own that's echo so chamber awesome. of what like our our ten fans who enjoy what we do. So we got a new subscriber. Thank you, Dark Demon dot queen thank you very much for listening um i hate to then follow this up with anson saying keegan michael morbius but um, <laughs> that, is, that is what is there um cal w says jared leto seems like the kid down the street who your parents forced you to hang out with very true especially after the news we read today dark demon queen is back she says lol from now on i'm gonna think morbius whenever i hear morbius thanks a lot guys angry face yeah i'm sorry dark demon queen that's the kind of thing we do around here um, ruin mm. films. Jaden says, Honshu, what a bird. A reference to Moon Knight. A very good one. Um, and a random kid says, such a great podcast. I'd like to clarify his name is a random kid. And I'm not just like, yes, I'm a random kid. <laughs> Walked up to me on the stream and was like, great podcast. Um, then on the Harry Potter one, Cal W says, no Cumbledore Grindelwald sex scene in the newest one. Zero out of ten. That's exactly my uh, point. Um, mm. And he also says just want to say quidditch is the worst sport ever the idea of the snitch completely demolishes the game because the snitch is like 150 points or something thus making the rest of the game pointless one team could absolutely be dominating the other one like 50 to zero but then lose because some 11 year old caught a little magic ball which is very <laughs> true that's what i'm saying it's so strange the only thing and i had this revelation the other day as i often have quidditch based revelations when i'm sitting on my own um i was thinking it is a little <laughs> bit like the sport of mixed martial arts because in that Someone can be winning for 14 minutes and 30 seconds and then get knocked out at the very end and then they lose. So, not entirely ridiculous, what a joke, but I do see your point, and I'm sure J.K. Rowling was not thinking of mixed martial arts when she was writing the first Harry Potter book. Yeah, but I guess, I think it is a little different because in mixed martial arts, the, the goal is, I guess, is to knock someone out. As like, it was like this, this like, uh... In, in Quidditch, it seems like it's two separate games, you know? Mm. Yeah. We also have a terrible chain here from Josie and Jaden where it goes, Sirius Black, what a jovial white. Then uh, Jaden comes back with, Cumbledore, what a DJ. Remus Lupin, what a Thulus. Buckbeak, what a bird. And then Josie comes back, FDK Gaming, what a legendary Eagle Master. BHL Hudson, what an abnormally large nose. So, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy about how that ended up. Um, you got legendary Eagle Master. <laughs> I got abnormally large nose, but um, you know we'll just we'll, very we move. very fitting. <laughs> um, Josie also says I really want someone to make an edit of Dumbledore doing all the crazy shit BHL and Freddie made in this episode, like DJ Dumbledore and him Harlem shaking. I would love that. If we have any animators in the audience, please go for please. it. Um, then Daniel says another really great and enjoyable episode. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, he says I'm so glad you finally talked about the main <laughs> Harry Potter films. <laughs> And um, gave a little ranking there. So yeah, thank, thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Movie guy did his ranking, but he did a little bit of a different one. Number 10, Fantastical Testicles and the Crimes of Jonathan Depothin. Number 9, Fantastical mm. Beasticles and Where to Find Them with Newtsticles. <laughs> 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 um, then Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Morbius. <laughs> Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1. Harry Potter and the Peacemaker Stone. What a joke. Harry Potter and the Chamber of the Fidelguards, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Goblet of Patman, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Order of the Cumbledore, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2, just goes normal for that one for some reason, <laughs> and then Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Thulis, <laughs> which is a great comment, and also <laughs> Prisoner... Brilliant. I also love the Deathly Hallows, it's just in there completely normal. <laughs> also, I love that Prisoner of Thulis sounds like truly the most terrifying position a person could be in in life. <laughs> Um, <laughs> speaking of which, Mahir says, I can't believe you guys forgot Thulis's name. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it either. And GC Green says, uh, I've only read two of the books and seen the first film, but this was still one of the funniest episodes so far. That bit about Dumbledore cueing the marching band after Patman dies <laughs> has me on the floor. Thank you, GC Green. I'm glad you enjoyed. <laughs> then... <laughs> Uh, we actually we actually have a couple more announcements real quick, uh, if you don't mind. Oh, just real, of real fast. Uh, first of all, Kian 
after helping me out figuring or letting me know how to use Letterboxd, he also uh, sent how to pronounce the new Joker's name, the guy, the actor, who we keep calling Barry Keoghan. He says, I'm almost certain the new Joker's name is pronounced Barry Kyogan. Kyo Kyo K Y O dash G H A N Kyogan Barry Kyogan. Anyway, in other news, Barry Kyogan was arrested for public intoxication or something this week, but that's a <laughs> different story. That was unrelated to that. Um, oh my God. He was apparently in, I not, in I Dublin. I did not and, expect that. <laughs> the, uh, what did he do? Arrested for public order incident. I don't know. I think it was like a very minor thing, but anyway, I just saw that headline and I was like, damn it, Barry Kyogan. Um, Damn it, Kyogen. I love the like minute of trying to pronounce his name there. Kyogen, <laughs> Kyogen. So, anyways, he's in jail. Um, <laughs> I don't. I think he was released very soon after. Uh, then, I just want to say shout out to the Pod Out of Context Instagram. Um, let me actually pull up its actual handle because not only do they post funny clips, you know, out of context stuff, but they also post like pretty pretty funny stories. Um, mm-hmm. Pod, where is it? context yeah like little stories that have yeah it's ppp underscore out of context little stories that like have polls and have like what's this week's episode going to be about and just funny stuff so yeah shout out i (laughs) i see you and i appreciate you um i see you and i like it then movie guy sent in a why him analysis via the email (laughs) i know that's a threatening (laughs) sentence to say but uh let's see I'm, why, I'm worried. <laughs> why Him analysis. There we are. I recently rewatched Why Him and decided to analyze it. So he's listed some things here. <laughs> Justice League style intro. Couples retreat with the Applebee's. Key. Get out. <laughs> Walter style run from Key. UFC. Franco and Key MMA fight. Rampage with the George statue. Knives out with the Hui. The office with the paper company. Pitch perfect with the bumper. And finally, Tabuscus. So I think this is a bit of a generous use of the word analysis, but um, <laughs> I appreciate it nonetheless. And it is, it is, it is accurate, and it is, it is amazing. It is, it is, it is factual. That movie contains so many horrible references to so many of our horrible things, especially lastly and finally, Tabuscus. Um, <laughs> thank you, movie guy, for that. That gave me a good laugh. The pod does have 23 ratings on Spotify, so I know that's very minimal, but also that's pretty good for us. So let's go. Thank you guys for that. Keep rating us nice. on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and stuff. And we have five stars on Spotify, so let's fucking go. Um, let's freaking go. And then finally, a little bit of a sad thing to end on here, but Anson left a comment about how his longer comments weren't getting shown, and I tried to look into it. I looked at, um, like, I thought maybe they were getting flagged as spam for some reason and they aren't there's no explanation for it so i'm sorry if that's still an issue that's persisting let me know in the comments and i'll see what else i can do but yeah i looked into it and i'm not sure Mm. but anyway um yeah that's the episode for this week uh good stuff question mark so hope you enjoyed this episode you can find uh us on youtube the poorly planned podcast if you're listening there please leave a comment about what you thought of today's episode and the topics what do you think of Thor and fantastical beasticles uh leave a like subscribe hit the bell button tell your friends about the pod all that good stuff and if you're listening on apple Podcasts and spotify leave us a five star rating hit that follow button and um yeah leave a nice review i guess uh we also you can mm-hmm. check out the fan pages link down below the fan made tiktok link down below and you can find me on youtube bhl hudson instagram twitter bhl underscore hudson and if you want to email the pod you can do so at bhl vids at gmail.com god damn beautiful monologue you can find me on twitter at ftk underscore adult sniper you can find me on instagram at fedagard and you can find me on youtube at ftk space gaming thank you very much for listening and we will see you next time for thor (laughs) we're making it a thing (laughs) you can't stop us (laughs) it's a thing